Hi, I'm Abby and welcome to Abby's Den. Right, so welcome to part two of the waistcoat project. I am making a Simplicity 8023, that's that waistcoat there. I'm actually making the one at the bottom, so that's um, version A. That's the one without the collar or the lapel, as some people might call it. The, uh, the one with the lapel I think is too dressy. It's great for uh, festivities, christenings, weddings, balls, dinners, but I think the one that's going to be more likely worn is the one without the collar. So that's the one I'm, I've decided to go for. If you watch the first part, you will have gone through the pattern with me, so the back of the envelope with me, and I will show you how to understand and decipher the codes in there, because it can be quite tricky. And then we created a shopping list for all the different things that we needed. I showed you how to measure the person you're making this project for. Um, and so you should be able to make sure that you knew how much fabric to buy for the project. So if you haven't been shopping yet, don't worry. You do need the pattern for this bit because now we are going to go through the instructions. So let's open the envelope up. Right, there we go. What I want to do is I've zoomed you in to the cutting layouts. Let me get rid of the second sheet. Cutting lay layouts. We've got the pattern printed side down and we've got the pattern printed side up. So if it's dark, it means it's um, upside down. The piece is laid upside down. So for instance, here's the pattern piece for a pair of trousers. And if I was to lay that on the pattern, I would lay it up like that so I can see all the writing easily. But if they want me to face it down, I'll just flip it upside down and lay it on the fabric like that. Okay, so we know now the pattern pieces are going to be laid either face up or face down. So we need to work out which section we're working on. Um, are we working on the vest, on the collar, on the bow tie, the ascot or the cummerbund? So let's go through it. So this section here, this is for the boy's vest. So that's not us, we're not working on the boy's vest. So I can eliminate that part. Now I'm just going to cover it up so we don't get distracted by it. And that's the interfacing as well for the boys. So let's cover that up. Then there's the contrasting collar. Well, we're not making a collar on ours, so we don't need to worry about those two pieces there either, that section. Then we've got the cummerbund. We're not making a cummerbund, not for the moment anyway. So we can ignore that as well. So I'm going to cover that up. And then this bit here is the bow tie with the interfacing. Again, we don't need to worry about that. And then the ascot, well, we're not worrying about that for the moment either. So we go over to this section here. And there we go. This is the men's vest. A and B. Okay, but remember, this is American. We call it a waistcoat in the UK. America, they'll call it vest. Now, remember, we talked about in the first part. We talked about the um, the width of the fabric. So you've possibly been shopping. What you need to do is decide which of these sections we need to worry about for the vest. So we've got with nap. So we've got 6A, 44 inches or 45. So that's 115 centimetre wide fabric. Well, the fabric I have is 150 centimetres wide. For the 150 centimetre wide fabric is already out. And that one's for 115 centimetres wide fabric. So that's out as well. So they are no good to me. That's irrelevant to me. So now we look at this, these two sections here, and um, we're either going to be following 6C or 6D. So 6C is with nap, and 6D is with nap. That's for sizes small, medium, and large. Now I've got to make medium, and 6D is with nap and extra large. Now what's with nap? With nap is something that has a one-way design. It's just a pattern that's printed in one way. If I put, um, I need to make sure that when I place the pattern pieces on a fabric like this, that all the dogs 
or standing up that way. Now, here's a plain fabric, which you might think has uh, no nap, but it does. So this is velvet, and if I have it that way, and if I brush it, can you see how the light shines? Because I'm making medium, that's the one I want to follow. Now, the thing is, it does say with nap, but it may be um, that the pattern pieces are the same for without nap. So let's mark that one up. There we go. And that's what we're going to follow. It says the cutting layouts continue on page two instructions. Um, and yes, it goes onto the lining. Now the lining is for a fabric that's without nap. So um, if you have nap, what you have to do is make sure that the fabric goes in the same directions. So say you want to line your waistcoat with something like, I don't know, something cool like dinosaur fabric, why not? Because you've got kids, why not? Um, you would want to make sure that you follow the pattern pieces in the same direction. Can you see here how the waistcoat back piece and the front piece are in different directions? So make sure that you lay your pattern pieces out in the same direction. Okay, so again, like I said, let's choose if you're not very um, confident just yet with this project, like I said, just stick with an easy fabric. I've got a plain design. It can be used either which way. And I've got plain denim for the front. So again, that's the interfacing I need, pieces one and two. It's a 6F. So that's using pieces one and three. 6F is the interfacing and that's for all sizes okay so I need to make sure that I circle that too so I'm going to I've got to make sure I've got the lining my interface and my vest pieces whoops using all those pieces there all right let's have a look what else there is Again, we've got the contrast collar we're not making, the cummerbund. We don't need the um, interfacing of those two pieces. We've got the bow tie and the interfacing for the tie and the ascot. So those are all ignored as well. If you want to, to help you, just put crosses over them and that will help you make sure you don't confuse yourself in making this. And you can again, and if you cross everything out, what will happen, and I'm doing it in pencil, so I can rub this out later if I want to. What will happen is, I know I've read that, so tick, I've read that, I've checked, I don't need that. And I can ignore, again, those parts there. Ignore that part there. And all the bits that I've got, maybe highlight them in a brighter colour. So maybe not pencil, but maybe in a brighter colour so that they stand out a bit more. Okay, so we've read that part, we've read that part, we know what they are. Um, we've gone through all of that. This bit is all in Spanish, we don't need that. That's just translating all that's written there. So I can cross that off because I've read it, I don't need it. This is really useful information here's my copy and um, if I keep this by my sewing machine it will be really useful for me it's really important to make sure you lay the pieces correctly because you can see the weave so what this grain line does so this grain line is help you position the pattern pieces in line with the fibers of the fabric if I show you, for example, on the denim, there we go. So you can see that there are straight lines going up and down. So if I laid my fabric like that, you can actually see that it's not straight to you, to the camera. And if I place it like that, it looks a lot better. So the whole point of the grain line is to make sure that you do place your pattern pieces in accordance with this line but we'll do the grain line when we get back to the fabric and laying the pattern pieces on I'll show you how to do that in detail this arrow here is telling us to lay 
the pattern piece on the edge of a fold. So this dot, dotted line here indicates the centre front or the back of the garment. That's really important to us in this project because that's going to help us work out how the buttons are going to fit on the garment. Notches. Now notches, a lot of you might know what these are. These notches are sort of just a little cut in the fabric to help make sure you match them up. You can cut a V out of the edge of the fabric or what I do is I just mark a snip. You have dots. Those dots will help you find the pivot point. So when you turn a corner or where you're going to place your buttons or where the shoulder seam finishes, they're there to just help you stop sewing or mark a certain place for a certain feature. So it might be the end of a zip, might be where the lapel starts, could be all sorts of things. So look out for those dots as well. The cutting line is a solid line and then you'll see in the middle of a pattern where you can shorten or lengthen. So our seam allowance throughout the whole pattern is going to be 5 eighths unless it's otherwise stated. It, stated. Now adjust if needed. So this is relevant to that bit here. So if you want to adjust by lengthening or shortening, so what you do is you cut between those lines there, right in the middle, and then either attach a sheet there or you fold at that point and make it shorter. So, you know, and then you tape it in place. Now we're not going to make adjustments to this pattern, so it's not relevant to us. It says before cutting, press the pattern pieces with a warm and dry iron. You pre-shrink the fabric by pre-washing washables or steam press non-washables. You should, I will highly recommend pre-shrinking your fabric. It suggests that we circle our cutting layouts. Now we've done that. So we know what we're doing. Pin your pattern to fabric as shown in cutting layout. So lay the pattern pieces on and then pin, pin it all down. Lots of people like to use pattern weights. If you're a beginner, I really don't suggest it. And on the other hand, too many pins makes it very bumpy. So we'll go through that as we're going through the pattern. For double thickness, fold fabric with right sides together. And that will help in the long run when we get to the sewing stage. For single thickness, place the fabric right side up. For pile, so that's that velvet I was telling you about, or you could use fur like I said earlier, or shaded or one-way designs, they're the ones with nap. So use the with nap layouts. Now we've already gone through that, so that's fine. So we know we've read through that. After cutting, we'll do this. Transfer markings to the wrong side of the fabric before removing the pattern. Use pins and chalk method or dressmaker's tracing paper and wheel. That's, trace make, that's the tracing paper and that's the wheel. And we'll show you how to do that. The, to quick mark, this is what I do. I just snip the edges of the fabric to mark the notches. So rather than cutting the V's out like these, I just cut a quick snip like that. But that comes with experience and it comes with time or it comes with confidence. So if you know um, that you will remember to follow those, then go ahead and use that. If not, make, make it obvious for yourself and make the V's and then pin the mark dots. So I, everywhere there's those dots there, I um, put marks on them. It says pin mark dots. I actually draw them in. I actually get my marking pen. So this one is one of my favorites. It's from Core Bond, and it washes away so it gives you a nice bright color, but then just with a clean damp cloth, it disappears. And I can iron over it and it doesn't stay. Okay, so that's, all marked so that's cutting and that's after cutting so that's what we need to make sure we follow all of that now special cutting notes here 
If the layout shows a piece extended past the fold like that, like that, basically what they're saying is after you've cut all the other pieces, unwrap the fabric. So, so if the fabric is like that and they show the pattern pieces sit like that, what they're saying is cut out all the other pieces and then unfold this fabric and cut the rest of the pattern out. And we can check that, can't we? We can see that nothing hangs over the fabric image. So we've got nothing like that appearing like that. Open out the, uh, that's that one. And this second one is mark small arrows along both selvages. Okay, so we've looked at all of these pieces now. And we hopefully are on the same level of understanding of what's going on in this pattern. Oh, we've missed this bit. You sew the garment following the sewing directions. So that's really going through the whole of the set of instructions on the big sheets. Pin or machine base seams matching the notches. And um, which we're going to do. Stitch 5 eighths of an inch seams unless otherwise stated. So they've said that over there already. Press the seams open unless otherwise indicating. So always press as you go. I will definitely recommend that. I think your work will just look superb if you press and go. Um, it just gives you that nice feeling of success. It just looks really nice, really crisp, really professional all the way. Right, so here's the tracing paper, all unfolded. Take your time, don't wash it through. This sheet here, I can already see, the pieces are quite small. And these are for the boys. So I'm going to fold this one back up. So anything I don't need can go back in the paper envelope. Okay, so I've got my paper scissors and I'm ready to mark off the pattern pieces that I need. So remember, I need pattern pieces one, two, three, and four. I will need pattern piece five because that's going to be my guide for my uh, buttonholes. So I'll cut that one out as well. So we've got pattern piece here, one, two, three, and four. And they've placed them all very close together. So what I can do is if I do a rough cut, all around them and there we go so i don't actually need the rest of this so to make it easy for me i've cut up a rough cut around the pieces i do need now let me just get rid of this for one second don't worry i'm going to press all that let me just show you this, because this is actually, fold that away, let's fold that away and make it easier. So there's one, two, three, four, fives, and that's for the different sizes. So we have the small, the medium, the large, and the extra large. I'm making the medium, so I need to make sure that I cut out the medium size. And it says so on there, so it tells you 8023 men, tells you the size, so it says here small, over here it says medium for size 38 to 40, large and extra large. So I'm just going to pierce through the paper like that and just cut that piece out. Now remember this is just the guide, I'm not going to cut this out of any fabric. It's there just to help me make sure that the spaces between the buttons are even. along there and we follow that line up here this is one of the things about multi patterns multi-sized patterns that they can get confusing so if you highlight your pattern to start off with so you know where you're cutting follow it around follow the shoulder round Follow that line down 
keep going and then what I'm going to do because it crisscrosses there if I follow from here and keep going make sure I unpleat that it's the second line from the end there and it's the second line in there we sort of matching that line becomes like that it sort of grades through now just remember don't worry too much about getting this bit wrong um if it's not entirely exact as long as you follow to there and as long as you follow up to there what happens there is you just want to create a nice shape and remember this is going to be both front pieces so if it, it goes a little bit maybe a little bit like that instead or a bit shallower what will happen is it will be reflected on the other side on the front piece so don't worry too much it's not a big deal and whatever you cut out on this the lining will be cut in exactly the same way marks these here as the medium and that's the medium there just so that I've got it right this time so boom, boom, boom. okay I've got blue sharpie let's not get this wrong now so I'm going to make sure I mark it there follow that medium to there so it's those two dotted lines I want to make sure I follow so I'm going to mark it down and then mark the medium dot there because it's on the dotted line there follow that dotted line down it sort of blends in with the small and then follow that dotted line just make sure I've got it right it up because I don't want to get this wrong And coming from there this is a dart what well, a dart a dart pleats your fabric and it gives shape to the garment keep going round and it makes my chubby husband look slim <laughs> but don't tell him I said that okay so I've got the marking now sorry for all the orange lines but now you can see how important it is to prepare before going straight into cutting out luckily we don't have any markings like that on the back but if we did we would know what to do so we'll do the same again let's highlight the medium So look for any other markings. I'm going to mark that like that. Now I've had this lying around for a while. I think it's still available. Um, it has been for donkey's years. So you get big sheets of uh, paper, just like the pattern pieces, and you can lay them on. So if you've got four or five people to make it for, if you're making it for a choir or a dance troupe, or, you know, or bright or grooms, not grooms, what do you call them? Ushers, page, page boys. If you've got lots of people to make them for and you've got to make different sizes, you can just trace the pattern out. This is sold by Simplicity. Um, I think they've all amalgamated, haven't they? They've all become one big company. So, yes, grab some tissue paper, copy the different patterns, sizes, and save the big masterpiece for next time.
Now I'm going to use a dry iron, that means I've not got the steam activated and I'm going to put the button, the marking on just, ooh, you could just leave it between one and two. There we go. 